So these have been glued to the shelf at my local for basically years now. Um, and with uh, my usual holiday shopping spree for tasting sets, I'm going to try them so you don't have to. Uh, Glen Rothas. Tree. What the hell? Glen, Glen Rothas. Jesus. Glen Rothas. Um, very interesting uh, distillery. Not so much for how it's built. It's, um, you know, it's a sh short fermentation space cider owned by a big corporation with fairly tall stills. Um, more for its recent history. So uh, currently the distillery is owned by the Edrington Group. That would be the, the Highland Park and McAllen guys. Um, but the brand up until recently was, was owned by Berry Brothers and Rudd. And uh, since the 90s, Berry Brothers and Rudd have been trying to make uh, uh, have been trying to draw attention to, to Glen Rothas by doing uh, vintage bottlings. <clears throat> so, you know, vintage with, with 1998, 2004, whatever, and everything would, all, all the, all the distal that would be coming from, coming from that year. Um, it's a bit like what Bal Blair has done, maybe a little bit more successfully. Um, Anyways, as of about five years ago, they sold off uh, uh, not just the distillery, but the brand to Edrington, and Edrington has decided to stop with all that uh, that nonsense, and they are now just doing standard age-stated stuff, 10-year-old, 18-year-old, I think, um, the usual. Now, what's interesting about this uh, very awkwardly packaged tasting set is that this is from the transitional period, maybe around 2016, 2017, when it was, the, the brand was still owned by uh, Barry Brothers and Rudd, but they kind of seemed to recognize that the vintage thing was not really working for them. So they thought, okay, let's just have some non-age stated stuff, you know, selling for 50 bucks and up, uh, bottle at 40%, that'll sell like hotcakes. <laughs> Anyways, um, obviously it hasn't, but uh, we're going to try these and uh, see how it goes. No notes for this, but I did have a little tasty taste out of, out of them last night, just to get air on the bottles. All right, let's start with the... Uh, Glen Roth's Vintage Reserve, Space Side Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Uh, again, probably bottled 2016, 17, somewhere in there. <clears throat> the story behind this is it's a blend of some other vintage bottlings or vintage casts they had lying around. So basically, they just had extra stock, and uh, <laughs> I want to believe like stores just sent back you know, cases of unsold vintage whiskey, and they were like, what do we do with this? Let's put it in a vat, all of it together, we'll sell it for 50 bucks, um, or 60, or whatever it is. On the nose. Uh, it's very grainy, so it's porridge and gummy worms is mostly what I'm getting initially. Um, apple, quince, some wildflower honey happening. White pepper, it feels uh, very like a very light spirit, which is what you expect. I mean, short fermentations, very tall stills. I cannot get away from that gummy worms note. It's totally there. A little bit of orange peel. Um, oh, and there's a kind of cake. Uh, I finally got a chance to try Jaffa Cakes recently. That did happen. And you know what? Jaffa Cakes is totally a note in this. Yeah, there's a there's like a, you know, that kind of confectionery cakiness thing. 
Okay. Um, not a whole lot of super interestingness, but let's see what happens on the palette. Probably should have added a touch of water to these. Oh, screw it. Um, ooh. It's not bad, but man, that finish just falls off a cliff. Uh, it just kind of disappears in my mouth. And wow, it is not going past, like, not even, it doesn't even get to my molars. Like, this is like, whatever those two teeth in front of the molars are, that's where this is stopping in my mouth. For something that's advertising itself as a blend of their vintage releases, this feels quite young. Um, there is some active oak in this. Uh, I would guess bourbon wood, maybe some reconstructed, recharred casks, but, um, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm just going to do some notes. <clears throat> Applesauce. Uh, we got that. We got some quince going on, which I like. I like quince. Um, not really orange peel. It's more like tangerine peel happening. Uh, we got some, uh, definitely some wildflower honey in there. I'm not, it's more gummy worms. Uh, I'm sorry, gummy gummy uh, bears on the palate than gummy worms. But they're kind of taking a second place. Uh, I don't know, like, um, touch of parsley, maybe? Um, the Jaffa cake kink thing that's that's saving my ass here if i didn't have that note i wouldn't know what to say um a little bit of uh like soggy coffee grinds happening like you we've left them out for like a week without cleaning them up that that kind of thing um that's sort of it and and the big problem here is the finish just does not exist like this feels like um yeah, I mean, this feels like a blend. If you, if you just kind of took the kind of grain whiskey ethanol-y thing out of, out, of, uh, out of your grain whiskey and just left those, the flavors that were left behind, that, that kind of profile, yeah, this is, this is what, how this is, that's kind of behaving. This tastes like Dewar's. This tastes like Cuddy Sark without the overt ethanol-y thing. I don't hate it. There aren't really any off notes. It just isn't going anywhere. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to give this a 79 out of 100. Yeah. And I'm not super excited about the rest of these after that. That was the one I was, I was really interested in, actually. Um, that was the one where I actually thought... Oh, maybe this is worth buying the set for a um, for close out twenty five bucks. Um, but now I'm like, Ugh. all right. Uh, now we are moving on to the Glenrothes Sherry Cask Reserve. No age statement. Space side single malt Scot Scotch whiskey, forty percent alcohol by volume. Um, so my beloved gummy worms are gone. Still getting the Jaffa Cakes thing. Still getting a lot of honey, but now it feels like everything has got a little bit of a sherry overcoat on it. So we're getting figs, black pepper, uh, a little bit of like stew darjeeling happening. And you got your appley notes. It's really more apple cheese this time, then applesauce. I talked about ch apple cheese in a previous video. It's a Lithuanian thing and you need to have that flavor note because it shows up in in the space side all the friggin' time. And in Calvados. <sighs> yeah. 
you know, maybe one gummy bear, but it's pretty minimal. Okay. Um, same, kind of the same reaction to the previous uh, bottling. It's just this time it's got sherry on it. That's it. Here we go on the palate. Um, so the finish is still not getting anywhere near deep in my mouth. It's still shopping well short of my, stopping well short of my molars. But the sherry casks are helping this hold on a little bit longer with a kind of nice peppery, over stewed Darjeeling kind of thing. It's very clean. Yeah, I don't hate it. Uh, what do we got? Um, Jaffa cakes, coffee cake, black pepper, over stewed Darjeeling, yeah. Um, apple cheese. I guess the, the cinnamon thing, the cinnamon stick was already included in the coffee cake aspect. <clears throat> um, it's better. It's pointed to better, but it's still not, you know, really doing it for me. Clean, no off notes, easy drinking, absolutely would never pay beyond 30 bucks for, for something like this. Not in my dreams. Maybe 35 if I just wanted something to that crushes easily. Um, 80 points for this uh, Glen Roth's Sherry Cast Reserve. So I'm going to give it a point higher than the uh, um, vintage thing. I'm losing track of these. Um, okay, and we are moving on. But it still has that same character of like, am I drinking a blended whiskey or is this a malt? What 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 is going on here? Uh, last up, Bourbon Cast Reserve from Glen Rothes. Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, no age statement, 40% alcohol by volume. I do like the slightly co lighter color on this. Um, you know, that gives me some hope. I light, I like whiskeys that aren't uh, too serious about dumping caramel into them. Let's see what happens in the nose. All right, so my gummy worms are back, which I'm happy about. Um, that gr that overt graininess is back, the, uh, the kind of porridge thing. Hint of grassiness, too. Um, Definitely vanilla, definitely the, the, the kind of Jaffa Cakes thing is back. Apple, honey. I mean, it just smells like a, a variation on Glenlivet, Glenfiddich, that kind of style. Really, probably more Glenfiddich than Glenlivet. And it's fine. Um, it's very, again, it's very clean. I have no problems with it. Slightly floral, the um, the wildflower honey is is definitely in the house. Yeah, it smells nice. It smells, you know, like an entry level malt, which would be fine. Except I think this is still like fifty bucks, which it shouldn't be. It should be in the thirties, mid forties tops on the palate. You know, I was expecting this to kind of be clipped uh, on the finish and kind of short, like the uh, the Vintage Reserve thing is. But it's not. The finish is actually pretty darn satisfying. This is still 40%, right? Yep. Let me try this again. It's definitely, there's definitely more grass and, and gummy worms happening on the palate than, and, and kind of dried flowers than I was anticipating. This is, this is okay.
Now, grass, gummy worms, clover honey, wildflower honey, not a whole lot of apple happening actually, like uh, maybe some like uh, a little cider apple in there. It's really more about the honey. Uh, certainly some, some vanilla, um, scoop of van vanilla ice cream maybe. There's a kind of nice flintiness happening here. Like, uh, yeah, just like a, uh, a rocky flinty note. Um, it's not really smoky, it's more about, yeah, flint flintiness. Let's go with that. Mm. The Darjeeling is there. Um, and the finish, is, it's, it's going a little bit further back in my mouth and it's not, certainly not holding um, for any less amount of time than the sherry is. Although it's more about white pepper and the kind of vanilla-y stuff and the nice grassy gummy worms thing than it is about um, um, the black pepper. This is okay, actually. Hold on. Let me go back and try these previous two again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion that this guy here, this bourbon reserve, might actually have uh, at least on average, maybe the, the oldest casks of the group. Um, it's still not old by any means. I, nothing here is probably going past 10, 12 years of age, but yeah, the, this behaves in my mouth with a maturity the previous two don't have. These have casky stuff on them. They don't feel like they have maturity. Does that make sense? Um, still not my, not my favorite in the world. It still feels a little thin. Um, still wouldn't pay a whole lot of money for it, but I'm going to give this 81 points. It's okay. So that's interesting. That's I did not expect a nice even progression. 79 for the vintage uh, reserve thing. 80 for the sherry cast reserve thing. And 81 for this perfectly decent uh, bourbon cast reserve. If you can get this, uh, well, really any of these, but especially the bourbon cask one, at a reasonable price, you know, end a bin, close out a price, go for it. Um, I wouldn't pay, you know, do not get above 40-odd uh, bucks for this for these, but the, they can play the same kind of role in your in your cabinet as, an, as a nice entry-level whiskey-like uh, Glenn Fittick, Glenn Goyne, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, all right, that's what I got. Not as bad as I was expecting, actually. This, this, these shows some promise. Uh, thanks for watching and cheers.